Hey guys, half click up here. Welcome back to another how to video in my Yamaha FZ6R mods and maintenance tutorial playlist. In today's video, we'll be swapping front brake pads. Now, there's not a whole lot to this procedure, so let's dive right in. Alright guys, so as stated, this is going to be a simple front brake pad swap. We are not doing anything extra like swapping brake rotors or anything like that. And so all you need parts wise is a new set of pads and some uh, brake parts cleaner. So specific to the Yamaha FZ6R, all years are the same 2009 to 2017. The front brake part you will need if you go with EBC's double H centered brakes is FA199HH. Now later, we'll also employ caliper grease in order to lubricate all of the moving parts inside the brake caliper. Now to remove the brake assembly, you have to remove four 12 millimeter bolts. Two of them hold this reflector as well as the entire caliper bracket in place. The other two hold the brake pad assembly inside the caliper. So to begin, we'll break loose the caliper bolts because once we break loose the bracket, everything will be free to move and we won't be able to apply torque to these two bolts. So we'll, we'll loosen these first and then remove the entire assembly. You can also pop this uh, brake line out of its keeper up here, just pulls right out. That'll give you some play room. So here's the pads. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's nothing wrong with these pads, and you're right. And with that being said, um, this video can also be, or would be appropriate to include in my FZ6R Track Day Experience series because these are the factory pads from 2009 and while they obviously have plenty of life in them our last time on the racetrack in houston we started experiencing bad brake fade in the front brakes uh, towards the end of our day towards the last sessions um, and so what we're doing is we're upgrading to ebc pads in order to avoid that kind of brake fade in the future all right so removing the pad bolts And that's what we'll grease up here in a little while with that uh, caliper grease. Looks like they're got plenty of old grease from the factory, huh? Check that out. And you see now the brake pads come completely separate from the caliper. Voila! Now we can swap these guys out. Now. Looking real quick at the orientation here, you can see how simple it is to swap these out, which is why I said in the beginning that there's not a whole lot to this job. So, there you go. Just place a new one in there, right? <laughs> Do the same with this. Look at that. Not exactly like 100% new, but relatively clean and a lot better than what it was. All right, so the caliper itself is gonna stay on the bike, so we won't be able to get this near as clean, I don't think, but it'll be better than nothing. Again, not as good as new, 
but you can see some shiny bits, and that's a good thing. Not bad for 13 years old, eh? Spring is in really good condition as well. Not too bad. Now before we insert the new pads, we're gonna have to compress these uh, pistons back into the caliper. Now the way the service manual says to do that, it's just like on the rear, it says to pop open the bleeder with a tube going to a container, which I don't have handy. So in order to simulate just uh, fluid being able to move, we're gonna come up here and achieve the same effect by uh, opening up our brake fluid reservoir which will achieve the same effect as if we just cracked open a bleed screw. It'll just allow fluid to move freely. Don't forget to wrap something around that. This stuff is highly corrosive to paint. That ought to do it. And also, just like with the rear, the uh, service manual calls to just squeeze these with your hand. To me, it's always easier to use this little C-clamp. There you go. Of course, I did fail to mention earlier that you gotta get two boxes of these. You know what I mean? You need two packages because as you can see, uh, two pads are required per caliper. So it kind of makes it doubly expensive. It is what it is. I got this set on eBay for $68 to give you guys an idea. Uh, so deals can be found on the old eBay. And also, manufacturer date is always stamped on there. That's uh, fourth week, I believe, of 2022. So we'll apply caliper grease. as well as this spring pad in here. I'm also gonna go ahead and get these pins greased ahead of time. Go ahead and wipe this old factory stuff off first. And get the other one. So that's kind of what you want so far, right? So what I'm gonna do is get a bolt ready, or you know, they're pins really. Get one of these pins ready. I don't know if you just caught what I did there, but I came from the side. I don't know if that makes sense. And honestly, that went a lot smoother than I thought it would. But if you come from the side, the ears that are on the top and bottom of the pads, it's uh, it allows you to slide them on instead of trying to place them on. And the difference there is between success and no success. So, it's a thing. Here, just hand tightened. So now we just slide this booger back up onto the disc.
like so. Go ahead and get your brake lines placed back inside the holders, the little keepers up here. That'll help keep it all lined up. She just kind of sits on there, folks. Not a whole lot to it at this point. Just replace our bolts. Don't forget to reorient your reflector here. Very carefully with one hand. <laughs> And get you a better angle here. Of course, there's a torque spec here, just like for everything else. But uh, my torque spec on brake components, when I don't know it off the top of my head, is basically going to be tight as snot. He with your hands, anyways. Like so. Don't forget to tighten your pad pins. Very tight. And there we go, guys. One front caliper, new EBC pads, done. Now, whatever you do, do not press the brake lever. Why? Because if you press the brake lever, that will not only compress the pistons in there, but remember, we still have the other side to do. So we also still have our reservoir cracked open because more fluid is going to come out of here when we compress um, this side, the, the pistons on this side, right? And so after this complete job, or after this whole job is complete on this side, we have it all reassembled, uh, the pads are open up and the pistons are open up on both sides, then we will replace the reservoir cover, clean all that up, and then compress our brake lever and, uh, and bring the pistons closed on both sides. Well, you see these pads are in equally fine condition, but time to upgrade folks. Time to upgrade. Isn't that incredible? The primary brake on the machine is in just acceptable wear condition after 13 years. 67,000 miles on these pads. It's just nuts. You know, it just occurred to me, the reason why that other setup, I mean, look, this isn't bad. The reason why the other setup on the left hand side of the bike was so bad is because that's the side that I had a bad fork seal leak on for uh, like probably a year and a half, two years. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, uh, fork seal replacement on the FZ6R, check that out right there. That's a long drawn out process. Full complete tutorial from start to finish. Worth checking out if you've never done it before. Look at that. That wasn't near as bad. No road grime on this one. You can even see the shiny bits. Cool.
There you go. Mount Caliper. There you go folks, second caliper complete. Now we can replace our reservoir cap. Now since we moved fluid back up into the reservoir, you'll see how it's seeping out now once we place the cap down. And again, that's because we displaced the fluid back into the reservoir. That's why it's important to have something wrapped around here to absorb that folks. And I understand you can avoid all this if you just use the bleeder screw with a tube and a cup, whatever, man. Same difference. You wipe it up really well. Moving on. There you can get a look at what they look like from the insides of the wheel. There. And. I'll go ahead and seat the calipers, seat the pads, I'm sorry, giving her a squeeze, real squishy. Here it comes. And all of a sudden, all our pressure is back. Easy peasy, boys and girls. Now the only thing left to do is to take the bike to the streets and go ahead and bed in those pads. Um, I think EBC recommends like a couple of hundred miles to fully seat pads, um, especially before it'll be ready for the track, uh, which again was the primary objective in swapping pads to these, these high performance options. Um, so we've got new EBC pads on the front. And if you tuned into last video, we have new EBC pads on the rear. They're working beautifully too, by the way. Looking forward to the next track day, folks. If you have any questions, as always, drop a comment down below. If you like this kind of tutorial content, smash the like button, share the video if you want to uh, share the tips and tricks on how to do these different things. And that goes for the videos in all of my tutorial series. Also, if you want to sponsor Half Click Up on the racetrack, smash the little heart icon down there that says thanks. All proceeds go to bike parts as well as track day uh, registration fees. So anyways, guys, as always, it's been me and that's been you. It's Half Click Up. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace and goodbye.